I wanted to do a vlog to show you how long it takes from start to finish to do a protest of your property tax appraisal. A lot of people seem to think that it's really difficult and it takes you know hours and hours of time. Throughout the video, you're gonna see a running tally of how long it's taking me to complete the entire protest, and then you'll see the amount of time for each individual activity. So I really hope this is helpful and enjoy the video. All right, so now I'm gonna fill out my property tax form. And like I explained in the video, step one, I've got some personal information here, but step one and step two, um, just have your name and the description of your property and it should already be filled out, so you really don't need to mess with that. So I'm gonna jump down here to step three and it says, check the reasons for your protest. And I'm gonna check value is over market value and value is unequal compared with other properties. Right here, I am going to leave this blank where it says to put other facts to resolve the case or when it asks ask me the suggested value. And what I'm gonna put here is mail me sales comp grid. And I attended a class this year and they said that it's a good idea to highlight stuff to make it you know, just kind of jump out. So I'm gonna highlight that. Then I'm gonna go down to step five and it says, do you want, the ARB to send you a copy of the procedures. I'm gonna check yes. And then I'm going to write my name and sign. And I'm gonna date it. And like I was telling y'all, you wanna mail this as close to the deadline as possible. So I'm, I'm cutting it pretty close here, but I wanna leave myself time to be able to take this to the post office and get it uh, certified so that I can have proof of delivery. Okay, so now that I filled out my form, I am going to take it to the post office because I wanna get it certified and have proof of delivery. So I've got my form right here and I'm headed over to the post office and so I will time the distance it takes me to drive from my house to the post office. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is um, go through the packet and try to get a little more information. So this is what it looks like. This is the first page and it shows you your property address. I've got that marked off just for privacy reasons. And one of the first things that you have to figure out when you're gathering your evidence is whether they are basing your value on your equity. This right here is the comp equity grid or the comp sales grid. And the difference between these two, the comp sales grid, this is gonna show you everything that's actually sold um, the past year. So for 2016, they're going to show you all the solds for 2015. The comp equity grid is going to show you homes that have not sold. So these, these are just homes, you know, similar size, similar location that um, are valued. And it's really important to figure out which one, because if they're focusing on equity and then you come in all prepared to challenge solds, you're not really going to have a good case. So continuing to track the progress on moving towards my hearing, uh, today I got something new in the mail from the Travis County Appraisal District and I'm pretty sure what this is going to be is it's going to be the dates for my informal and formal hearing and please, please don't be 8 a.m. I'm just kind of praying it's not real early because I'm not a morning person. So let's go ahead and open it and see when my hearing dates are. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open it and see what it says. Okay, so this says notice of protest hearing. I'm gonna open it up. Yay, I got afternoon, I'm so happy. Okay, so my informal hearing date is going to be on July 26th at 1.45 p.m. And my formal is gonna be on August 2nd, 2006 at 1.45 p.m. And remember, I had told y'all earlier that the most important one to go to is the informal. That's just the one-on-one -on -one situation where it's not, you're not under oath, it's not recorded. The formal one is going to be where you're going to have two or three people. It's going to be under oath. It's just going to be much, much harder. So I will definitely um, make an attempt to go to this one. And I had made a note on my, uh, I just made a note on when I put the, the protest hearing form in the mail and I said when I was going to be on vacation and I'm really happy they, def they didn't give me any dates where I was out of town. So I'm going to keep doing that. I just took a class this year and I got that tip and I think it was a good one. So um, since a lot of people are traveling in the summer, uh, just make a note of any days you're going to be out of town and let them know and hopefully they won't schedule on those dates. 
All right, so I thought it might just be kind of interesting to show everything that came in my envelope for those of you that have never protested. So the first thing I got was when my hearing dates are. Then it also gives you this little handout that tells you to, of course, arrive on time and bring copies of your evidence. I've never really done the, the five copies thing. I think that's really more for when you do the formal, when there's multiple people that you have to um, put your give your information to. So I wouldn't worry about that if you're going to, to the informal. And then it has like a handout right here tells you um, helpful tips for going to the formal hearing, tells you kind of how it works. This right here gives you some tips on, you know, the homestead exemption. And then it's also got, um, this is actually what I would say is one of the most important things to read over. It just talks about the whole entire process, you know, how to protest your value, um, how to complete the form, how to resolve your concerns. My protest date is tomorrow, and of course I'm cramming at the very last minute. It's actually almost 7 o'clock. Had a really long day. But anyway, I'm now going to sit down at the computer and get to work and kind of show you the ins and outs of what I do to prepare my evidence and also show you how long it takes. Okay, so now I'm in the MLS database because I am a realtor and I have access to this information, and I'm going to pull up similar homes that have sold. And one thing that's really important, if you go to another agent and you need comps, um, you know, some agents know this, some agents don't, but it's always the, the last year um, sold prices that matter for this year. So for 2016, we wanna look at everything that sold throughout 2015. So I'm gonna pull up, you know, my date range. I'm gonna go from January 5th go all the way through here. And then um, they sometimes will take comps from the first few months in 2016. So I'm gonna go all the way through uh, February 29th, uh, 20. 2016 to see what I can pull up and then I'm just gonna go ahead and fill all this information in you know the square footage You need to stay really close when you're looking at comps the square footage. I would say maybe go up um, My property is around 1600 square feet. So I'm gonna look at 1400 to 1800 so just a couple hundred feet, you know bigger or, or smaller and then you want to stay really close on your built mine was built in 1983 so I'm gonna pull up um, this means everything under 1989. I'm going to pull up everything that's older. So you really can't look at, you know, brand new comps. You can't look at, you know, much bigger or much smaller homes because they're just not going to, you know, accept that. Okay, so I just did my search and it came up with a total of 32 homes that sold within that time period. And what I'm most interested to see, this right here, let's see, it's hard to do this while I'm filming, but I want to sort by sold price. So I basically want to find, you know, the the ones that sold for the very lowest. I mean, of course, since mine's valued at 220, I don't want to pull comps that sold in the 280s. So I'm basically going to look at these that sold for the lowest prices and see if they're included in my sales comp grid. All right, so this is the website that I'm going to go on to look at the homes that were valued based on equity. So I'm going to Travis Central Appraisal District website. So it's traviscad.org. If your property is in Travis County, that's where you want to go. And if you're in another county, you're just going to pull up that website. And then all I'm going to do is just go right here where it says property search and click on it. And then it's pretty easy. You can actually search um, just by a street. So you just go up here and instead of owner name, you're going to put at, no, not account number, sorry. You're going to put property address and then you're just going to put in your street name. I would put in, you know, your street name and any street name near you and look up what homes similar to yours are valued at. Okay, so I just entered in my criteria and it came up with 40 results. And this tells me the appraised value for all these properties that are on the same street as my rental property. And I'm just gonna kind of go down and look at all the prices. Another strategy that I tried, um, a different rental property of mine went up 28%. So I got hit really, really hard. Um, it was valued at 212,000 in 2015 jumped all the way up to 272,000. So this one, I really, really wanted to um, have a lot of different strategies on how to get that lowered. Okay, so what I do after I've done all my different research, you know, I've got a lot of inf different information, all, all different, you know, things that I've pulled up that I kind of went over with you guys. And what I do at the end, just to kind of keep it straight for myself, is I just kind of write down all the different ways, all the different strategies I'm going to try. So on this particular property, some of the comps that they used had corner lots and mine doesn't. So I'm going to focus on that. Um, I'm also... I wrote down drive-by interior picks, so I'm going to have some pictures of my own property to kind of show the value and condition is lower than the solds. And then what I just went over with you, that 28% increase, I'm really going to focus on that because they cannot dispute the fact that the average increase was only 10%, and they're trying to say it's three times that at 28%, so I'm really going to focus on that a lot. 
Um, and I'm going to focus on the solds and not the equity. Um, this is a different property than what I was talking about first. Um, as I mentioned before, I have my personal property and then two rental properties. But I just kind of wanted to show you real quick, you know, it's, it's nice to just have a lot of different strategies. You don't want to go in there and just only focus on this thing or only focus on that because you never know what kind of mood they're going to be in or what they might think is important or not important. So just come up with a lot of different strategies so that you can have a better chance for success. Okay, so I'm here at the Travis Central Appraisal District and I'm about to have my property tax protest. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I always uh, feel nervous before I go in, but fingers crossed I'll have success and as soon as I come back out here, I'll let everybody know how it went. So wish me luck. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in my properties before I go protest. I'm so excited, I was successful. I got all three values lowered. It was really, really tough though. Again, it seems like it just keeps getting harder every year. Uh, the guy kind of said a couple times like no and I just kind of just kept on, kept on and I tried to be really friendly and engaging. And he actually said to me, I asked him what is the number one advice you would give to people coming in and he said be nice, be friendly. He said so many people come in there and they're aggressive and they're rude and when they do that he just sends them to the formal right away. So anyway, I'm so excited. My winning streak has continued, but gosh, I can understand how some of you are maybe not being successful because it's definitely getting much harder. So that's how long it took me to complete my informal protest. As you can see, I saved a lot of money and I really didn't spend that much time. So I hope this video helped you. Please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Music